Hello everyone, welcome back. It's a bit cold out here in Texas. We're getting sleet. I don't know what sleet is. Apparently it's kind of like snow, a little bit wet. What it looks like to me is tiny little pieces of ice. It's all over the place. It's kind of different. Anyway, I talk a lot about bad presuppositions and bad beliefs when we approach the Bible, when we approach God. The Arminians, the apologists, again, they believe that their senses, their minds, their reasoning can tell them about God. That is the main way that they understand God. And the secondary way, maybe even third or fourth, is the Bible. So the question is, if those are bad presuppositions, those are bad assumptions, then what are the what are good assumptions? So that's what I want to talk about today. There's a few that I can just name off the top of my head, but I want to try and begin with the Bible. Scripture is true. The Word of God is true. The Bible is true. And again, this is something that Primarily, we accept by faith. Hebrews says, faith is the substance, the evidence of things that we don't see. Faith is the assurance, the conviction, uh, the old King James translated it, evidence of things not seen. That we know God is true. We know the word of God is true by faith. This is the faith that God gives us. This is in Philippians 1.29. This is all throughout Acts um, John 6, the Spirit gives life. In, I think, John 15, somewhere, Jesus says that. The Spirit tells us all things and explains things to us and brings thing, brings things, things to mind. Um, Paul says in Ephesians that God reveals things to us. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him. Primarily, we know the word of God is true by faith. This is... This is difficult to accept if you are carnal, natural, if you do not have the Spirit of God living within you. Um, but that is not us. That is, uh, that is the world. I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. We do have evidence that the Word of God is true, but that is not our foundation. The Word of God is confirmed by miracles. It is a miracle that it, it has existed or as long as it has. And there are, there are a lot of reasons why Scripture is true. For that, you can read one of those guys' books. Geisler or Turek or Josh McDowell or William Lane Craig. They all have books on why the Word of God is true. I think Vadi Bakken has a, a book also. So that is our first assumption. The Word of God is true. The, the second assumption, the second presumption or presupposition, is that we are sinners and, and everything else comes from the Bible. We are sinners. We have no wisdom, no light in ourselves, no intelligence but what God gives us. And so this should cause us to humbly seek Him and ask God for understanding and revelation. So the second assumption is that we are weak and sinful and ignorant in ourselves. Without God, without His Spirit, without His wisdom, uh, without Him giving His wisdom to us. The, uh, the things about God that we should believe first when we study the Bible are that God is holy. This is, this is repeated twice in both the Old and New Testaments. It is, it is His one attribute that is emphasized triply or thrice or three times whatever holy 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 is isaiah says this i think it's isaiah 6 by the way if you guys 
need some good Bible software. This is eSword. I really like it. Um, I paid like 20 or 30 bucks for the NASB, but everything else is free that you see here. Um, even the English Standard Version is free, and it comes with references. Okay. Anyway, Isaiah 6, this is the attribute that the scripture says twice in two different passages, and it says God is triply holy. I mean, he is more than just um, three times holier than us. He is infinitely holy, but this is said three times to emphasize that this is his singular attribute. He is holy. He is separate. He is different from us. And this is also in Revelation 4, 8. And Revelation 4, 8. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and who is to come. So that is the other attribute. The, the Armenians and the Calvinists, sorry, the Armenians and the anti-Calvinists, along with the Universalists, the Open Theists, they always say God's first attribute is love. But this is not true. That is what they want to be true because they're, again, they are, they're weak, prone to their emotions, and they refuse to understand God on his terms based on what he says. And so their, their main avenue by which they understand God is their emotions. And so that's why they say God's first and primary attribute is love. I know Charles Finney said this, Arthur Olson Jerry Walls, he's a big anti-Calvinist. Charles Wesley, they all said the same thing. And and it's very ignorant of what the scripture says. So God is holy. Um, God is omnipotent. We see this in the first verse of Genesis. He is all-powerful. He created the universe. And for some perspective on that power, just look up. The size of the universe, the size of the galaxies, all the billions of galaxies that exist. I, it is impossible to comprehend what is out there in our universe. I mean, I can barely comprehend how big our little planet Earth is. Um, go to the Grand Canyon. It's, it's just amazing. But this is nothing compared to what God has done in the universe, in all creation. It's God is omnipotent. And... Omniscient, infinite in intelligence, for all the things that he's made in, and all the ways that he has displayed his, his creative might, his creative power and intelligence, you can see it. Even just looking at, at your own body, it is a miracle. It is not something that just came by accident. That is ridiculous, preposterous, stupid, completely stupid. That everything that exists came about by accident. That is, it is a, it is literally mental illness. So these are the things that we begin with when we study the Word, when we seek God. Scripture is true. God exists. We are sinners. We are dirt. We are dust. This is Isaiah 40. We are nothing compared to God. Even Genesis 1 says we are dust. Anyone that does not begin with this that tells you that you are infinitely valuable that is a big red flag gay or straight every human being is made in the image of god and has infinite dignity and value and worth we have value in so much as god ascribes it to us but not just because we are created not just because we are human beings god uses us for his purposes and we are Absolutely subject to whatever he wants. He does what he wants with us. This is in Romans 9. This is all over Isaiah. And even in the beginning of Genesis, God orders everything that happens. When God tells Adam and Eve that he will send someone, the seed of the woman, to, to bruise Satan, to destroy Satan, and to, to die for our sins, this is an indication of God's plan. Of what he's going to do all throughout history and so that tells us that he is sovereign over everything everything that occurs and you see this also in the story of joseph that's what i think our framework should be as we study the bible our mindset and our attitude gay or straight every human being is an abomination
Hondo.